Hello aviators, Sky here, and today, finally, we are approaching the logical conclusion of our marathon of the large and luxury Gulfstream business jets. People who are aware of course will say that we didn't cover every single plane, but for now I think this will do. We will return to the junior models later. Today's story is devoted to the transition of the company to a completely new generation of its flagships. After a few decades, in the new century, they turned the page and moved on. And so, newcomers of the industry, the models 500 and 600. Gulfstream G500 and G600 are two business jet brothers from the newest G7 generation, created by Gulfstream Aerospace approximately now. They made their first flights in 2015 and 2016. These airplanes are new models, designed to replace the company's obsolete medium jets, which is what they are doing now. Given the time gaps, we can say that we are now at the very beginning of these machines' history, so there isn't much to tell. Technically, it begins at the end of 2009. It was a good time. Obama is the president, Windows 7 is released, shuttles are still flying, Rio is preparing to host the Olympics. In November 2009, for the first time, the Gulfstream G650 prototype made its maiden flight. The apogee of the industry, a symbol of luxury and technology with completely wild performance and equally wild prices. However, the 650 was not only one of the best planes in business aviation, it also whipped the back of Gulfstream itself. The fact is that the Model 650 was created from scratch, applying everything that aviators could offer, but its coolness was affecting its little brothers. The main Gulfstream bestsellers for a long time were the G4 and G5 generations. These aircraft were comfortable, reliable and efficient, but they were created on the basis of previous generations, which limited their capabilities. A series of modernizations in the early 2000s led to the birth of their updated versions, the G450 and G550 were good, there was nothing to complain about and customers were taking them with pleasure, but the appearance of the G650 made them obsolete in a second. Yes, business aviation is conservative and cold-hearted, buying the planes is a precise and pragmatic process. It is often easier to buy an older plane and get everything you need for a normal price than to roll out a truck of dollars for a couple of cool features in a brand new one. But on the other hand, we are all human, we like everything new and stylish. Yesterday iPhone 7 and 8 were good enough, but now they are not, everyone wants that notch. This is something similar. On the one hand, there is still demand for the 450 and 550, without a doubt. But on the other hand, Gulfstream started noticing questioning looks. But nobody had to force them to start. In parallel with the implementation of the G650 program, the projects for replacing the Little Brothers were conducted in the company behind the closed doors. This process was slow, the old models, the new versions of which appeared only a few years ago, were quite relevant, and making three completely new aircraft at the same time was too bold, even for Gulfstream. But the work was being done, and the plan was simple. To create a completely new G650, confirm the effectiveness of new technologies, and then create newcomers based on them. The G450 had to give way to the G500 model, and the G550 to the model G600 respectively. Since the 650 was chosen as the basis, they are very similar to it, but nevertheless not in everything. The flagship is a very large aircraft, with a huge range and according requirements. For the passengers, the first priority, of course, is the dimensions of the cabin, and here it is really huge. Younger models should have a shorter range, be simpler and cheaper. They didn't want to just make simplified versions of the G650. Some of its features would raise the price and would not be necessary. Besides, the model line should be divided more prominently. Therefore, the new models were reduced in size. The height of the cabin is just 3 cm or 1 inch less than that of the senior model. Its width was reduced by 18 cm or 5 inches. Its length was cut the most. The flagship reaches over 16 meters or 53 feet. The G600 length is 2 feet less and the G500 cabin is nearly 6 feet shorter. Externally this is noticeable due to the number of windows. While there is 8 of them on the G650, the newcomers have 7. 
However, despite all the cuts, the new aircraft are still much more comfortable than their predecessors. The internal volumes alone are increased by 10 to 12 percent, not to mention the equipment and new solutions in comfort. In terms of comfort, the newcomers are at the very top of engineering and design. All the classic features are in place, but the huge windows, internet and luxury materials are now accompanied by improved technology, updated interior and an absolutely wild thing. The fact is that in the cross section of the fuselage the planes are almost identical, and the difference in width and height of the cabin is mainly due to the more complex and efficient soundproofing. It comes to some discomfort. During a cruise flight you might get a thought that the engines are not working. The maximum capacity of 19 passengers is a sacred figure for Gulfstream. Their planes will soon be the size of the Boeing 767, but they will still accommodate 19 people. For the rest of the overall indicators, the planes are close, but since the G600 is a bigger model, it is slightly larger and heavier. The maximum takeoff weight of the G600 is approximately 43 tons or 94,000 pounds against 36 tons or 79,000 pounds of the G500. The G650 is the heaviest, more than 45 tons on the basic and almost 47 on the ER version. Accordingly, the flight distances are increased. 9,600 kilometers or 5,200 nautical miles on the G500 12,000 km or 6,500 miles on the G600, 12,900 km, 7,000 miles on the G650, and about 13,900 km, 7,500 nautical miles on the G650ER. It is quite a ladder. However, from the outside the junior models are very difficult to distinguish from each other. Visually they are almost identical, differing only in dimensions, and this difference can only be determined by running around with a measuring tape. Most of the aircraft's onboard systems are unified, fly-by-wire, onboard computers, power system, avionics, almost the same now on all aircraft, but in the cockpit the engineers let their imagination run free. For the G500 and 600 a new interface was developed, which was called the Gulfstream Symmetry Flight Deck. The core of this system, of course, is the Honeywell Primus Epic, but with serious modifications, huge screens, design solutions, ergonomics, a real beauty. Plus, there are multifunctional touchscreen displays here, as many as 10 of them, 6 on the main panel, 3 up above, over the heads of the pilots, and another one service display in the rear. They are all slightly pushed out, looks like the displays on premium cars, but in practice it is necessary so that you could hold to the frame when pressing, for accuracy, if the plane for example flies through the turbulence zone. As a cherry on the cake, a control block with side sticks, created in cooperation with BAE systems. This is the first such experience for the company, the rest of their aircraft, including the G650, are all equipped with the classic yokes. The legacy of the yokes here is the active controlled side stick system, which improves the quality of the pilot's interaction. It doesn't feel like just a handle connected to the fly-by-wire, but like a real drive of the control systems. In addition, the side sticks of both pilots are synchronized, as if they have a mechanical connection to each other, like the classic steering wheels. It is of course an imitation, but in theory this should make it easier and more comfortable to operate the plane. So in general you can really feel that the creators of the cockpit worked very hard for the pilots. The remaining solutions, EVS providing improved visibility, synthetic vision showing a virtual three-dimensional map, the head-up displays, classic. One of the biggest innovations and differences from other models of the line are the engines. On the G650, as on most other aircraft of the company, the British engines are applied. But in this case it turned out that they are not the best option, so Gulfstream shamelessly cheated on Rolls-Royce with Pratt Whitney. The G500 and 600 are using the pure power PW800 family engines, and this choice is quite logical. The fact is that the 800s are completely new engines, which moreover are based on the company's PW1000G flagships in the middle segment that have now become the basis of the fiery hearts of the new generation airliners. The A320neo and A220, MC21, MRJ, E-Jet, E2. Having such a cool option it would be strange to install something older. 
The G500 uses the version 814 with a thrust of 67.4 kN and the bigger G600 applies the version 815 with a thrust of 69.8 kN. The engines accelerate both aircraft to a speed of Mach 0.9 and lift them to the already usual ceiling of 15.5 km or 51,000 feet. So, the work came to the finish line by 2014. The G650 was already flying and the time had come for new fashion shows. In October, a brand new G500 rolled out on the company's site in Savannah on its own engines. Its maiden flight was made in the spring of 2015. Over the next two years, a test group of four aircraft passed certification and flew more than 3000 hours. And in 2018, they were joined by a pre-series board with all the options and interior. It was used not only for testing, but also as a demonstrator. In the summer of 2018, certification was complete. Deliveries of the first aircraft started in September. The G500 replaced the G450, that in fact is no longer being produced. While the 500 was passing flight tests, Gulfstream was also training its big brother. The G600 made its first flight at the airfield of the Savannah plant in December 2016. Once again, four prototypes participated in the flight tests, plus one pre-production board. It was originally planned that due to the unification of two models, the G600 certification will be completed simultaneously with certification of the G500. Many systems had already been tested on it. But because of a number of difficulties, this trick didn't work. It is assumed that certification of the aircraft will be completed in summer or autumn 2019. By the spring of 2019, 15 planes were produced. Four G600 prototypes and one pre-series that will be delivered to the client after certification. Four G500 prototypes and one pre-series already delivered to the client. Plus five full-fledged series boards, also already delivered. The catalog price of the Gulfstream G500 is around $45 million. The larger G600 crawls up to $58 million, a high price, but still less than $70 million of the 650. Performance and cost in this case are important advantages of this pair. The overwhelming majority of orders for the new Gulfstream aircraft fall on these two planes. Well, the planes have just appeared. Their history so far is short, but will probably be long and hopefully successful. And this is it for today. The voyage across the sky continues and many new and interesting things are waiting for us in the future. Fast flights and soft landings to you.